tonight is a two-time Grammy Award-winning artist, star of Law and Order SVU for the past 24 seasons, <laughs> and one of the originators of gangster rap. He's now written a new book called Split Decision. Please welcome to the Late Show, Ice T, everybody. I love you. I love you. I love you. Popping off in here. This is yeah, cool. Yeah. I've never been in here. You never been in here, even with Dave. You never been in here? No, I've never been well, in the Ed Sullivan Theater. Welcome to the Ed Sullivan Theater. That's what's happening, man. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I'm old. I grew up off Ed Sullivan back in the day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Beatles, Elvis, Presley, Jackson and now Fox. Ice Two. Gee, man. I'm Finally. in the building. I'm in the building. There you go. <laughs> okay. Now you and I had a chance to talk uh, a few years back on the old gig. But uh, back then, I didn't get a chance to ask you, how did the name Ice-T come about? How'd you get the moniker? Um, I used to read books by this writer named Iceberg Slim, who was a player and a pimp, and I... I, I how old high, were you when you were reading these books? I'm, as, I'm, I'm in high school. Okay. So uh, I would... Uh, I learned... My, na my real name is Tracy, which in the hood, that gets you into fights, because guys meet you. <laughs> yeah, they meet you and they say, Tracy, yo, that's a bitch name, man. <laughs> So now you're fighting somebody you just met, you sure. know? So I turned that into Trey. But I would quote Iceberg Slim, and uh, I would say all this fly stuff, and people would say, say some more of that ice stuff, T. You know, so Ice T is short for Iceberg T. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember any of the... Do you remember any of the knowledge you learned from Iceberg Slim? Just that these women ain't gonna give you a chance. You gotta be sharper than them. That's all I had to understand. You know what I'm saying? Nicely done. So I had, to, I, had, I had to learn, and at 16, I'm quoting words from like a 45 year old player. Wow. And the girls thought I was incredible. They thought I was fascinating. <laughs> I never told them it was Iceberg Slim. I was like, that's me. You know? <laughs> now, you're passing some of this knowledge on with your book now, which you wrote with uh, your old friend Spike. It is called Split Decision Life Stories. Um, first of all, who, how long have you known Spike? Spike and I were friends back in the days. This is, predates me making music. This is when I was in the streets of South Central Los Angeles, and Spike and I were crimies, and we used to do robberies. We did hundreds of robberies. Uh, we robbed jewelry stores. We robbed... I could speak on this now. There's a thing called statute of limitations. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, we, were, we were very, very successful at it, and then there was a point... I was so successful, I never got caught, you know? And um, what happened is, at some point, I decided, hey, music is starting to come in. I'm going to take this route. Mm -hmm. And he tried to do one more lick. And during the... During the, the it, when it happened, someone got killed. And he ended up getting a life sentence, 35 to life. Uh, you know, they tried to give him the death penalty. And at the end of the day, he made it out. Now he came back. He did 26 years in the penitentiary served his debt, and now he wanted to write this book as a cautionary tale to people to let them know that every decision you make can change the trajectory of your life. So... <laughs> you, you talk in the book a lot about growing up as you describe yourself a hustler. Do you remember your first hustle? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my first hustle, I used to sell Kool-Aid. You know, I, I would take a dollar's worth of Kool-Aid as a kid, and I would break it down, and I would make $10 selling it. And I'll never forget, you know, one day I, I, I was selling Kool-Aid, and my father came in, and I said, uh, he said, what's the matter? I said, I couldn't, I couldn't sell any today. It got cold. He said, well, if they ain't buying Kool-Aid, sell them cookies. And I've never heard anything more genius than that in my life. And <laughs> that's one of the basis to big business is, you know, don't, as the trends change, you change with you them. You should be on Shark Tank. I'm telling you, because you say hustler, you say hustler, I say capitalist. 
Is that what that is? Hustlers are mega capitalists, you know yep. what I'm saying? But you're coming, when you're hustling like I did, you're coming from a survival aspect, not greed. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at the options that you have available to you at the time, and you think, well, crime is the way to get it. Mm -hmm. Later on, I learned that, no, I don't have to limit myself to crime. I can use that same initiative and push in a positive direction and look at the success. I mean, I've actually, how the hell, after this, the all true stories, how am I the longest running cop on television? <laughs> Good question. That's a good question. That's a hustle. That's a good... That's the hustle. <laughs> now, you started making music in the 1980s. What surprised you about uh, <laughs> uh, rap music, the scene? I think the biggest thing that surprised me about music was you could lie. I, I mean, I, mean? <laughs> I was watching music videos. I'm like, oh, that's their house. That's their car. That's their girl. And then when I got in there, like, oh, you can rent a car. You, MTV Cribs, you don't have to have this house. We'll put you in a house that's not yours. I'm like, this is all fake. You know, and, and I didn't know that. And when I got in there, you know, I always had to use my own cars. I had, I had a rhyme where I said, I don't rap about girls I ain't caught, guns I ain't shot, or things I ain't bought. The game to me is too deep. If I did, I honestly believe I'd die in my sleep. So I've always been held to the code of being honest. So let's talk about this cover right here, OK? My, that's my your girl. Album. That's your girl. That's my son's mom's. That's Darlene. Those are my guns. And that was my life at that time, you know? And hey, I didn't know you could lie. I was like, what? You could get someone to... <laughs> They'll come and put jewelry on you for the video and then take it back. Or you got all the girls in the jacuzzi and their boyfriends are sitting right out of frame, waiting on them, like... <laughs> so I, I, I was coming from a real world, Steve. I didn't know about this show business is so fake. Except this show. This is all real. This is all real here. We keep it real, right? OK. We have to take a quick break. But when we come back, I will ask Ice-T about his first experience with performing. Stick around, y'all. Thank <laughs> you.